you got to take a little bad with the good. having slash had a great weekend at the risk of sounding as old or older than I am I can't remember a July where we've had so much rain but today's beautiful and looks like it's going to be pretty nice uh, for the next three four five days So I had, you know, one of the things that happens when your audience increases is obviously, you know, you get a wide range of people watching videos. And I got my first comment last week that made me, gave me pause, shall we say. And I'm not going to name the person because quite honestly, I don't remember and I don't remember what video it was on. All I can tell you is that there were a lot of words that were in all caps. And I don't think they really listened to what I was saying. Because <laughs> there were some inferences there that uh, you know I certainly didn't intend. Uh, but that, that happens. And, uh, you know... My fairy godmother used to say, you got to take a little bad with the good. I had an opportunity uh, to go up to Illinois, or as some of you may say, Illinois, uh, over the weekend. Saw my dad and my brother and my sisters, and got a haircut, obviously, uh, from my A number one barber, and that would be my dad. Gave me my first haircut ever. And uh, pretty much every haircut until I was into my 20s. Um, Barbers, for some men, can be uh, a pretty important thing. And I'm certainly one of those people. And to have somebody uh, cut your hair that has given you hundreds and hundreds of haircuts, and it's a pretty special thing. And for 82, he's still got... Pretty damn steady hands. So uh, that was nice. And yeah, what else? Yeah, it was just a good weekend. Surly has done it again. And I'm sure a lot of you already know this. Uh, They dropped what they're calling the corner bar late last week. A couple of people online have already gotten their hands on uh, a set and have tried them out. Uh, I think from the reviews that I've watched, uh, the one on bikepacking.com is, I think, I'm not going to say the best, but it certainly was the one that I, it checked all the boxes with me. And this is a, a great time opportune time for me to gratuitously ask uh, to for you to grab a friend uh, or friends and if they haven't subscribed to the channel have them subscribe because if I if we pump these subscribers uh, the numbers up a little bit more maybe I can convince the powers that be to give me some of this stuff early and then I can review it and tell you what I think that would be great, and I would appreciate it. One of the biggest challenges when you are trying to put drop bars on a bike that didn't have drop bars on it uh, originally, and vice versa if you're trying to go the other way around, is that it takes. It can be expensive because it's generally going to take different brake levers, 
different cable, different housing, you know, different lengths of housing, a different shifter or shifters. Um, it can be costly unless you have, you know, just a big box of parts laying around. So what Surly did is, and I'm really at this point surprised that no one had done it before this, is that they developed a drop type bar that will take your flat bar controls. So your, you know, let's say mountain bike brake levers and shifters, and you can put them on this bar that simulates the positioning and feel of a drop bar. Pretty ingenious, really. But I've said before that, you know, if I listed out all the things that Surly either invented or took from, you know, really niche kind of custom build and brought it to the mainstream, I mean, I, you know, you'd, I'd be here all day. The thing that I that I kind of gave me pause initially, but now it seems kind of brilliant, is that the bar's 25.4, and it comes with a 25.4 to 31.8 clamp. And my first blush was, why in the world would they do that? But then I thought, well, oh, if you're doing old mountain, if you've got an old mountain bike and you're trying to, you know, make it into more of a drop bar touring bike setup or just kind of all road setup. Yeah, you're probably going to have a, a stem with a 25-4 clamp. So that makes a lot of sense. The thing that I'm not so sure about, but I will wait until I get my hands on one, is when I have a drop bar on my bike, the hood's position is the most important thing for me. I don't really care about the drops. Most of the time, I'm going to be on the hoods, and I want that position to be comfortable I don't really know that it's going to have a true hoods position there's going to be a position that is going to kind of be like being on the hoods um but I don't know but like I said that that review on bikepacking.com uh, he has a channel here on the YouTubes uh, he did a really good job kind of going over the the pros and cons of that bar. Uh, ETA looks like September. Um, and from what I've heard, parts like handlebars and I would think possibly racks and frames are going to start showing up on a more regular basis. Um, it's complete bikes and components, drivetrain components, that are still going to be... Uh, a real problem for the foreseeable future. But as soon as I get one, I will slap it on the bridge club. I've still got all the same, the controls from the, the bike when it had the Maloko bar on it, and uh, I'll check it out. My guess is it's not going to require as short a stem, but I, I don't know. I'm just going to have to get one and see. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you have a, a great week. If you're watching on Monday morning, you got that notification bell rung. And even if you don't, I hope something good happens to you today. Till next time, be nice, work hard, ride bikes, play music when you can. I'll talk to you soon.